Hi, my name is Madeleine Cadwell and I'm a corporate lawyer lecturer in Spain. Today we're going to talk about some frequently asked questions in regards to incorporating a legal entity in Spain. What types of companies can be formed in Spain and what are the differences between them? There are different types of entities to be incorporated in Spain, but the most common ones are new companies, subsidiaries and branches. A new company is a company whose shareholders are individuals or people. A subsidiary has a shareholder, which is a company, a different company, can be a national company or foreign company. And a branch is the same. It's um, owned by a different company. Normally it's a foreign entity who wishes to have an entity in Spain. So it's a extension of that foreign entity here in Spain. The difference between the subsidiary and the branch is that the subsidiary has independent legal personality and therefore the mother company will not be liable for any debts in Spain, whereas the branch does not have that independent legal personality and the mother company will be liable. What is needed to open a company? Depending on who the shareholders will be and who the directors will be, there are different requirements for opening a company in Spain. First of all, um, every person involved, so shareholders and directors, will need to have an NIA number. Whether the directors or shareholders are individuals or companies. If they're companies, then the representative of that company will need an NIA number as well. Also, you need to have some bylaws drafted and other legal documents that a lawyer can definitely advise on. And finally, the minimum share capital, which is 3,000 euros. What are the steps involved in the process of forming a company in Spain? First of all, you will need to obtain the NIA numbers referred to beforehand. Once the identification numbers for both per, uh, persons and companies are obtained, you will need to draft the bylaws. These bylaws, along with other documents, will need to be signed before a notary here in Spain, and that will be sent to a commercial registry of the address, the registered address of the entity to be formed. Once it's at the registry, the registry has up to 15 working days to incorporate the company. And once it's incorporated, all we'll be left to do is obtain digital certificates and activate the company. How long does it typically take to open a company? This question depends a lot on whether the identification numbers of the shareholders and directors are obtained or not. Normally, if they are not obtained, it can take between four to six weeks if everything is straightforward and goes smoothly. And the longest part is the commercial registry step, which can take up to 15 working days. What are the tax implications of forming a company in Spain? There are different tax impl implications depending on the type of company to, inc to be incorporated. Generally, corporate income tax is the same throughout the whole country and it's 25%, but there are certain um, requirements that if are met, then the t corporate income tax can be reduced to 15%. What are their ongoing compliance requirements for companies in Spain and what are the consequences of non-compliance? So basically for companies in Spain we have um, two different sorts of requirements. First you have the commercial registry requirements which are submitting annual accounts yearly. If this is not uh, met, this requirement is not met, then the commercial registry will close the registration sheet for that company and no changes can be made to the company, no change of address, change of name, change of directors um, or others. The, the second type of requirements are tax requirements, which are basically filing corporate income tax yearly and VAT returns quarterly. If this is not done after a couple of years, normally two to three years, with non-compliance, the tax agency revokes the NIF number. What are the labor laws and regulations that companies in Spain need to follow and what are the implications for hiring employees? Again, there are different laws and regulations depending on the structure of the entity, on the, on the activity to be carried out. But normally when a company is incorporated, the first step would be to get a CCC number which is basically an employer's code with the social security, registering the company with social security, and then uh, providing the employee with a contract following the regulation of the collective bargaining agreement that the employee must adapt to. So this collective bargaining agreement will, will explain um, different requirements for the contract to meet, such as salary, such as holidays, etc. How can I protect the company's brand? 
There are different ways to protect the company's brand, but the uh, most common one and most effective is to register a trademark. A trademark will definitely uh, protect this, this brand from being used for, um, by third parties, um, and there are different ways to protect it. You can protect it in Spain, you can protect it in Europe, or you can protect it internationally. However, please bear in mind that internationally, it will not be protected in every single country in the globe, just the countries selected that are part of the Madrid Protocol. How can I open a corporate bank account? Corporate bank accounts uh, depend a lot on the, on the bank chosen to open the, the account. Um, they have more or less strict requirements to open these accounts, but generally nowadays the, the director must come to Spain if the director of the company does not already live in Spain. The director must come to Spain to open the account, um, meet the, the account manager and give the bank that security that there is in fact an individual um, that they can contact if there's any issue. So the director will definitely have to come to Spain to open the account. Can I use a Spanish company to operate throughout the, the EU? You can use a Spanish company to operate throughout the EU, uh, depending again on the activity to be carried out. You will need to be registered in different censuses, such as, for example, the VIS is very common. What resources are available to help you form and run a company in Spain, such as legal and financial advisors? There are different resources available depending, again, on the activity. Uh, there are a lot of resources available nowadays for, for startups or companies that are considered startups, normally in um, developing a technological new activity um, or an activity that provides a lot of, um, a lot of work in Spain. Uh, however, it's highly advisable to, to discuss this matter more with, with a legal advisor who will, who will be able to, to advise on the different uh, resources available depending on the activity and if this company could be considered a startup. Lastly, how can Lexity help you form your company in Spain? Lexity can help you through the whole process from start to finish and make the process as simple as possible for you through a power of attorney. We provide uh, 360 services, so once your company is incorporated, we will be able to help you with, with the payroll setup, with obtaining the employer's code, with also your tax and accounting obligations to make your business in Spain run as smoothly as possible. So uh, for now, these are all the questions we've received. Um, we hope this is, this is very helpful, and if there's anything else you require from Lexity, any assistance or any further questions, please feel free to reach out.